Now let's talk about the uh, another important fact about uh, non-mendial inheritance and that is the maternal influence on maternal inheritance. Okay, maternal inheritance is a process where we will see the genotype of mother influence the phenotype of the individual. The genotype of mother influence everything about the individual, the every phenotype of the individual. Father's genotype does not play a single role in that in influence or inheritance. Now, when you solve problem, you will see, we will also solve problem for uh, the pedigree analysis. And it's very easy to guess an uh, idea of the maternal influence pedigree by looking because in the maternal influence pedigree, if a mother is infected, then all of her children are infected. This is the scenario. If mother gets infected, everyone will be infected. I mean, sorry, I put it wrong. It should be come from here. If mother is infected, everyone will be infected. Okay, this is the idea of maternal in inheritance. Because the genotype of mother influences the phenotype of all individuals. And this is how. And uh, this is the pattern of coiling, snail coiling actually, you will see. So let's say this is the parental generation. In the parental generation, there is this is a female, capital D, capital D, male, small d, small d. Capital D is for dextral coiling, small d is for sinistral coiling, dextral and sinistral. So capital D is the dominant one, that's why it's capital. So if it is capital D, capital D, it should be dextral. If it is capital D, small d, it will also be dextral. If it is small d, small d only, then the answer will be sinistral, right? This is according to the Mendelian inheritance that we know. Now, let's see. So, at the very beginning, this is the female, capital D, capital D, with the male, small d, small d. And this cross generates all the offsprings, capital D, small d. And every one of it are dextral. Every one of it. And according to our Mendelian knowledge also, it should be correct. Everyone should be dextral here. On the other hand, here, the mother is small d, small d, sinistral. Father is capital D, capital D, dextral. According to the Mendelian inheritance, again, all of them should be dextral because capital D is the dominant form. But here we will see all of them are sinistral. See? This is a scenario which, e, which cannot be explained by the Mendelian inheritance, right? See, the mother was sinistral. All the offsprings are sinistral. Mother was dextral. All the offsprings are dextral. Now, if we take single example from here, let's say if we take a capital D small d mother and a capital D small d father, right? So, let's do that. What should we get? We get this, we get this, we get this, and we get this. Four, four uh, other offsprings, let's say. Among these four, what we know is that these three, as all of them have a capital D, should have dextral coiling. One, that is small d, small d, should have a sinistral coiling, right? But the answer that we get is all of them are dextral. Why? Because the, because the mother that we took, was dextral. So, if you take the dextral mother from the F1 generation, cross it with the sinistral father, every offspring that we get are dextral. This ratio, do not go for this ratio, this ratio is for the Mendelian one, but we see this ratio is not maintained here. The ratio should be 3 to 1, phenotypic ratio, right? 3 dextral, 1 sinistral, but that is not happening everyone in the F2 generation are dextral. They have dextral coiling. Now, this is the interesting point. If you take the F2 generation and individuals from F2 generation and cross each other, in that case what we will see is that the small d, small d, the only way, most of them are again will be dextral. The only way the sinistral will be generated if the mother that we take, if the mother have this small d, small d. If the mother have here this small d, small d. This is the only way that we can generate sinistral. 
otherwise every single way it will generate dextral if the mother has one capital d all the offspring will be dextral if the mother has two capital d all the offspring will be dextral the only way sinistral coiling will be generated is the mother should have two small d that is the homozygous recessive for the sinistral this is maternal influence simply influence right presence of mother's gene why you know if you ask yourself a question why this things happening why this things happening can you tell me why what is the reason behind it i mean why mother's influence is important why not father's influence going on why maternal influence is there why not paternal influence there is nothing called paternal influence in that sense you can't find it you will only see the maternal influence there are holandric gene expression x a y linked gene that's a different thing but you will never see paternal influence in that sense you will see maternal influence can you tell me why anyone just try what whatever you think about this process i mean the simplest way to explain this process why this thing is happening why we get a maternal influence in the first place cytoplasmic inheritance abid says cytoplasmic inheritance and that is correct cytoplasmic inheritance is playing the vital role just in due to x cytoplasm that is correct kind of thing so this is why that's why it's going on the cytoplasmic inheritance plays a vital role here and remember whatever of offspring is generated either male offspring or female offspring whatever it is generated it is generated due to the fusion of egg and sperm but in that fusion in the zygote that we have the 2n number of chromosome containing cell the first cell the zygote the zygote contains nuclear components as well as cytoplasmic component the cytoplasmic component in zygote comes from only mother origin comes from the egg so whatever cytoplasm that we are now we have now are from our mother so obviously uh, getting this thing in our mind we can tell that we are fond of our mother more than our father because we get we share most of the things from the mother according to the developmental biology right so now let's look at the mechanisms much more detail because as the cytoplasm is there in the egg and also the genes are also present in the egg so egg in the from the egg the nourishing cells that are present surrounding the egg that are called the nurse cells of egg those genes are present and those nurse cells slowly supply all those components all the genetic component the small d or the capital d genetic components faster in the egg even before the sperm enter or even before the sperm nucleus enters more correctly right so see this is why it's happening so this is the egg cell this is the egg cell and these are the nurse cells that are nurturing the egg cell okay and these nurse cells contain three different ways are possible here actually actually the nurse cells will produce all those you know uh, express the mrna and then finally they will produce the proteins and they'll uh, insert that those proteins slowly in the egg right two types of alleles are there capital d denoted with green small d denoted with red so now three possibilities capital d capital d capital d small d small d small d so if it's capital d capital d in the nurse cell and they produce that capital d component in inside the egg cell all them will all of them will get that dextral pattern if it gets capital d small d so in that case both of the either capital d or small d can come but ultimately it may come from let's say from this nurse cell it is capital d from this nurse cell small d but actually it will get the component of small d the component of capital d protein so as it gets the component of capital d protein according to the law of dominance that protein will express and ultimately again give the dextral coiling so this to dextral on the other hand the only way sinistral coiling will be there is those nurse cells they express small d and only the egg cell receives small d components then only it will get sinistral now why this dextral and sinistral coiling occurs 
because you'll see it depends on all those proteins that that they provide that's capital d proteins or small d proteins those proteins determine in the farrowing process you know farrowing means when the zygote is formed then the division of those egg, uh, egg uh, i mean zygote in multiple dimension how they are getting divided right one after another that's called the farrowing of the egg the cleavage of the egg the zygote so that zygote farrowing changes due to the presence of those protein factors for example if the capital d thing present here capital d components present they will arrange those microtubules during the cell division process in a particular order in a particular angle to the cell and that's you will see the farrowing process the division occurs in a particular 3d orientation gives the dextral on the other hand for the small d component the arrangement of microtubules are completely different with a different angle remember these are schematics but still it is close enough to explain how see the 3d modeling or arrangement of those cells because you know once the cells start dividing they will start to form layers of cells the pattern is important whether the new cell will come on the top whether it will go on the right side left side or the bottom it depends we'll see the farrowing process in more details while we discuss about the developmental biology more but this farrowing they arrange the cells differently and ultimately now give the sinistral coiling so we get a dextral coiling in this case we get a sinistral coiling